All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the hue circle transform in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So at the end of this video, we will see how we could write code to generate this image here and detect some circles and maybe some that are not circles. So what is the hue circle transform? It's a method to extract circles from the image. So it's similar to the hue line transform that we talked about, but in this case, we are applying it to circles. So why do we need the hue circle transform? So it's good for circle extraction, like we alluded to, um, but also for partial circles, just like how with lines, if it's a partial line and they can extract a full line, the same idea with a circle, if it's a partial circle, it's possible to extract a partial circle. And it could also find circles of different sizes, depending on how you write your code. So we'll see that in our example later on. And how does it work? So the way the hue circle transform work is you have to first start off with an image. Then once you get an image, you find the edges of an image using um, whatever method of your choice, probably some gradients. And then so here is the image example of what the edge of an image will look like. And the idea is for each point on the edge, we want to draw a circle with some radius. So if, for example, we know the radius of the circle already, um, for each point on this edge, we could draw a circle. So in this case, we're just drawing it at four locations. So you get uh, one circle here and then the other three here. And the intersection Essentially, every this is like the accumulator graph. So at every point that um, repeats, you get added to another bin. So you could think of this as like a histogram graph, and it's just counting how many times um, the the circle that we draw is overlapped or how many times they it occurs. So that's why if you end up drawing four of these circles. At the center, it's going to be the brightest spot because it overlaps exactly four times. But in practice, you would do this for every single point. So if you were to draw it out, you would have a bunch of circles. That's not shown right now, but you would just draw a lot, and you would end up seeing that it's going to accumulate the most at the center. So that's what this part is, the highest occurrence or most accumulated point. And where the brightest point is, um, this might be like your A and B or B and A that will represent your X and Y coordinates. So that will tell you the location of the center of your circle. Um, so the radius is not known. There's a little bit um, different process. So here is the accumulator for a single radius, but you could imagine you could expand this to um, A, B, and R. So you could just imagine a bunch of slices of different radius or radii. So we could repeat this process. So this might be, you know, this could be radius of one, and then this one could be radius of two, and this one could be radius of three. So you do a radius, uh, repeat this process for different radii, radii, and then you could search this whole volume for the brightest. But in OpenCV, they do some special um, gradient method to make the search more efficient, um, but this is a general idea if you were to implement it the same way we did for the hue line transform. Okay, so let's jump into the coding example. Okay, so as usual, we're going to go ahead and import some of the modules that we will be using. So we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and then import cv2 as cv, import numpy as np, import os. Okay, so those are the main things we're importing. And we could create a function here, we're gonna call it def, and call this hue uh, circle transform. And we'll fill that out later. And then we have if name equals main, and we'll call our hue circle transform here. So inside of here, what we're going to do is go ahead and read in our image. So root equals os dot get cwd, and then image path equals os dot path dot join, 
pass in roots. It's going to be in demo images. And we're using our image called uh, tesla.jpg. And our image is going to be cv.onread. I'm going to pass in the image path. And we're going to have a RGB version. So cv.cvt color. We're going to pass in the image. And then we're going to do cv.color uh, bgr to rgb. And we're similarly, we're going to have a gray version. So cv.cvt color image uh, cv.color bgr to gray. Okay, so first step is we want to blur our image a little bit to remove any noise. Um, we're just going to do a medium blur. And we're going to pass in our gray image. And then the size of our kernel is going to be 21. Okay, so to start off with some of the, um, the main function that we'll be using for the hue circle transform is called hue circles. And it's going to return circles. So here we're going to say cv.hue circles. And we're going to pass in our gray image. And the method is hue uh, gradient. We won't talk about the other ones, but this this is their optimized method. And then DP is essentially your down sample size, or like how many steps you're taking. So one is like for every pixel, um, but you could modify that. And then we have our min distance. That's the minimum distance between the detected circles. So in this case, um, we're going to choose 600 because for the ones that are too close, we don't want to detect. And then param1. This one we're going to be 200. So this is pass in for the canny edge detection, the upper threshold. And then for param2, this one we're going to set to 15. So param2 is the accumulator threshold. So depending on how many times it counts, um, it'll threshold pretty much anything uh, below that. It's going to discard it. Okay, so then. Pretty much just like a robustness factor or how, how frequent you detect it. And we could set up the range for the radii, the sizes that we want to um, search in. So minimum of 100 and then a maximum size of 150. So now to actually draw the circles, we could do for circle in circles. And then what we're going to do is do cv.circle and then pass in our RGB image. And then the actual circle um, location is going to be circle 0 and then circle 1. And then here we're going to have circle 2. OK, so that's the location and then the radii. That's the input argument. And then the color, we're going to do 255, 255, and 255, and 10 for the thickness. And plt.figure and plt.show um, uh, image RGB, and then plt.show. OK, so this should show our circles being plotted. And if I go ahead and run this, we will see what happens. OK, so we have circle, let's see. OK, so we need to modify the data type for the circle to make it happy. So we need to do circles equals mp dot um, uint, uint uh, 16, and then mp round circles. So this will be some data type conversion, and then now it should be working. Okay, so you can see that it has detected some circles. And notice some parts aren't actually circles, but uh, the algorithm thinks it's circles. But this is one main circle that it got detected, which is the steering wheel. And you could notice if we were to play around with some of these values, for example. So let's say um, we had like a lower threshold maybe of two, you could see how the results would look like. You could see it detects a lot more circles. And you could also play around with the threshold. So maybe if we didn't have such a 
um, high threshold for this, let's say like 100, you can see how that might look like. Okay, so more circles. And if we were less stringent about our circle size, you could see that uh, you could end up detecting a lot of circles that maybe we don't even want. Okay, so if I run this, because there's more circles that it's searching for, it'll take longer. That's kind of the consequence. Um, but you can see that it has detected a few more circles. Okay, so hopefully this gave you a better idea of the hue circle transform. And if you found this video helpful, Give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.